and be sorry for them as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about you. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles are co-heirs members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. secretly and ascertain from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen as its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
And having been warned in a dream not to return to Hira, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Last November, I was given an opportunity to be able to go to the Holy Land, to the real Holy Land. And, uh, and at our visit there, we were taken on top of, of a hill overlooking the city of Jerusalem. It was a wonderful sight to behold. Just that, and, and you see all of the buildings, they're so close to each other. And then there's the golden dome right there, right in the middle of it. And then our guide pointed to us that there's a doorway, like a portal, and now it's, it's uh, sealed. But we said that portal is where all will enter when they enter the new kingdom of God, the, the new Jerusalem. That's where they're getting entered, and it's sealed. And he pointed to us that around that facing Jerusalem where the most expensive burial sites are. Because all people wanted to be buried there. Is it at the second coming of our Lord? Or when the coming of the Messiah? Uh, because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They said, at the coming of the Messiah, the dead will rise and they will be facing Jerusalem. And what better place would be the most proximate? Right there, facing Jerusalem. So it cost lots of money to buy a piece of little plot facing that. And, and we were so proud by that. And, and what a beautiful vision that is. That at the end of days, people will rise from the dead. And people will all gather and be united in Jerusalem. But a beautiful vision is given to us by Prophet Isaiah in our first reading of today, in chapter 60 of Isaiah. And this was written post-exile in order to give hope to the people about the coming of days when God will triumph and will usher a new beginning for everyone. But here, it very much align itself to the description of Epiphany, the one that we're celebrating today in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the coming of the Magi, the offering of the gifts. But then, here is where the beauty of it comes in, the vision and the vocation of Jerusalem. That it is the place where in all people will gather together coming from different areas of the world, bearing gifts, like they're paying homage to a great king, to a huge emperor, to the king of kings, and they are all going there led by the light. But that light is not the source of its brightness, but the brightness of that light comes from the Lord, from the king who gives light to that star so that that star can guide people from many places to find its way towards the king. What a beautiful sight. Just imagine it. There are people coming from many places bearing gifts. Gifts to be offered in homage to a king. In our second reading of today, it brings, St. Paul brings it to the proper perspective of a Jerusalem. What is really that Jerusalem? He says that it is Jesus who is the new Jerusalem because he is the Lord. Jerusalem in itself would be empty and nothing without the Lord in it. And the Lord that we all, we're going to pay homage to, is our Lord Jesus. And Jesus is the head of the body, which is the church, the church of Jesus. And we belong to that body. We are all part of that new Jerusalem. But that new Jerusalem, it's not like other. For in the first reading of today, though there was mention of people coming from different uh, parts of the world, 
but it is primarily for the Israelites that they're coming home. In, in the second reading of today, in the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, he was so clear in opening our eyes to that Jerusalem that our Lord is inviting all of us. And that is a Jerusalem that is inclusive, a Jerusalem that is a spirit that has the spirit of solidarity and inclusion and communion of others. Because he says here that the Gentiles are co-heirs and members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus to the gospel. I mean, that's, that's unheard of during the time of St. Paul and during, that's why there's a lot of bustle going on in the early beginnings of church. Because they were thinking like, the church, our Lord's kingdom is exclusive only to the Jewish people. They are the chosen people. But then our Lord is opening their minds and their hearts to the understanding that, no, the kingdom of heaven is open for all. It is meant for everyone. And the Gentiles to whom St. Paul was sent to give and proclaim the gospel are also part of this. We are part and co-partners in building of the kingdom. What a beautiful way of looking into that now as, as a clear image of what the true kingdom of God is, the true Jerusalem is that we are all invited to come in, is that we are all being challenged to be inclusive, to be a church that is welcoming for everyone. And the gospel today, what a fitting way of nailing this message is that the Lord was born in the midst of everyone, and the prophet has foretold that Bethlehem will be the place where the Savior will be born. The, the, the wise men of Jerusalem, not the Magi, the scholars, the priests, anybody else knew about this event as a very significant event because when they were asked, where will the king be born? They knew, they researched, they're there. It's in Bethlehem. As the prophets have prophesied, you, Bethlehem, will be the place where the king will be born to shepherd his people. So they knew, but they ignored it. They went elsewhere. They did not go to the, with the Magi in pay homage. They were so arrogant about that. But then the Magi, coming from the outside, they are outsiders. They were the ones who was able to benefit in that revelation, in the epiphany of our Lord, in the showing of the light of our Lord to everyone, they are representing us. The Magi is representing us all. As like them, we're all searching for God. We're all looking for Him in our own lives, in our own events that happens to us. We're all searching, where is Jesus? Where is God? And we're hoping that a light will shine to guide us to find Him. We can all be that light. The challenge to all of us is not only to become a Magi in search of God, but become the star for others so that they can find their way and meet Christ and have that encounter that we all so long to have. That the invitation is not only for your family and friends, but it is inclusive for everyone, no matter where they're coming from, no matter what their orientations are. We are in a world that is so challenged when it comes to being inclusive, there is that new gospel 
that is being preached to the world about division, about parochialism, about building walls, about protectionism. We're kind of isolating ourselves from one to the other, mistrusting each other, and just thinking about our own selves, corralling ourselves, and protecting our own territories. This is mine alone. But reality is, nothing is yours. Nothing is ours exclusively. There was this beautiful thought that came from an astronaut. He said, you would have a different perspective of what the world is once you are thousands of feet up there and you're seeing a planet, a blue planet. And that blue planet doesn't have borders. And the beauty of that blue planet is that you see it in its entirety. It's like a beautiful jewel out there with no boundaries and borders. Let us say when you are there, you forget the conflicts out there that like they're so minute and they're so petty. Because when you look at the world from the outside and you say, wow, we are so blessed to live in this earth, to be here, sharing the same resources, having the same race, and calling ourselves of the same nature of humanity, enjoying the gifts of creation. When you look at that, you will see it really doesn't matter what the color of your skin is and your persuasions. It really doesn't matter. That's another perspective that we need to explore. There's another perspective that I think we need to promote to be able to see beyond the pettiness of differences and diversity and look at each one not according to nationality but rather according to its brotherhood in spirit that we are God's children all of us with no exceptions so the suffering of one is the suffering of all. Can you sleep in the evening if you know your granddaughter is suffering from meningitis? Would you be able to sleep at night knowing that your favorite daughter is suffering from deep malnutrition? Would you be able to sleep well at night knowing that one of your daughters is struggling for her life because they're being harassed, intimidated, persecuted, somewhere in Timbuktu where you cannot help them physically. You know, if you look at that in that kind of perspective, then you will see that the world is not between us against them, but we're all the same. So in reality, the Rohingyas of Burma, the migrants from East Africa, the Sahara, Sub Saharan Peninsula, those that are affected and are dying because of the persecution of their faith in the Middle East, and those of us who are hungry and shivering in cold, the homeless of the major cities in America. all your brothers and sisters. So look at it as an epiphany, as the Lord presenting to us something so great of an opportunity. Drop everything that would prevent you from looking at somebody else's life as something different from yours, but rather embrace the reality that we are all brothers and sisters. That 
is different. That is God manifesting himself. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Lord by me, and the Lord of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of your life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As heirs of salvation, we have confidence to approach God with the needs of our world. For all church leaders, may they be filled with joy in their mission to radiate God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. For all nations, may the witness of committed Christians foster an increased respect for human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. For women in crisis pregnancies, may they receive the support they need to carry their babies to term, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here, may we be inspired to deepen our faith and place our trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our catechumens and candidates, may they find what they seek in Jesus and choose to follow him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the increase of worthy vocations to the sacred priesthood, consecrated life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died, may they experience the glory of God forever, especially Barbara Papetti and Barbara Powers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of glory, we place these prayers in your hands, trusting that you will grant the people of our world what they most need through Christ our Lord. Amen. The gift bearers today are Marianne Phillies, Josephine Carell. Special occasion of the Mass is CCW Corporate Mass, and the second collection today is for faith formation, an envelope system to defray the cost.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we now end the acclaim. Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks to broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How do we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. grant peace in our days, that with the God of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
us pray. Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly open the inside back cover of your music hymnal, and together we pray the very prayer. Anima Christi, soul of Christ, sanctify me. By your Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, liberate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Redeem your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil of all, protect me. And the hour of my death, call me. And lead me come to you. To grace you with all your sins. I can be seated for a few announcements. There's an upcoming event to support life. Um, we have the floor in the March for Life that will be held in St. Augustine next Saturday, January 13th. We'll be leaving at 8.30 in the morning, uh, after the 8.30 morning Mass, and then we'll be returning between 4 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Anyone interested should sign up in the church office and fill out our adult consent and liability waiver form. We'll also be taking the church van, so space is limited. I think that's also good for eight people. So if you're interested, it is a first come, first serve basis. But if you would like to go there on your own, maybe spend an evening there on Friday, go to a good restaurant up in St. Augustine. Treat your family to a good ice cream. Walk the downtown there, uh, the old cobblestones, and and ride the trolley around the city. Oh, it's a very good, you know, excursion. You can go there on a Friday. You don't need to sign any of those uh, adult waiver liability thingy. You don't need to do that. Just go there and enjoy yourself for a good time. Treat your family for a good night out or weekend out. And then the next day, attend the march. Then you're saying to the world, I support life from the moment of conception to natural death. And don't forget to pray for us, who's going to go to the big one in Washington, D.C. Uh, it would be, I think we're leaving on the 17th, and then we'll be coming back on the 20th. But I'll be here for the Mass on that weekend. The rest of the group will stay there for a sightseeing and enjoying the snow out there <laughs> while I am here warm in Florida. So, so pray for us, we'll be going to this, this about eight of us from the parish with, uh, I think we have four young people who will be joining us for the march. would like to thank our Knights of Columbus who have uh, sponsored our trip out there in Washington, D.C. Continue to pray for them. And um, I wish to thank all of those who have participated in bringing ornaments, Christmas ornaments, that they hang on our Christmas tree. Um, if you wish a family to pray for you, or for your family, leave those Christmas ornaments in our Christmas tree this weekend. But if you uh, value those ornaments, like it's a family heirloom that you need to bring home with you, you may bring them now. After Mass, you go to the uh, uh, Christmas tree, take home your own Christmas uh, ornament, uh, then uh, you can keep it for next year. But for those who wish to be prayed for, leave them there. Somebody is going to pick it up next weekend. And uh, I would like also to uh, promote a wonderful fundraiser to support the efforts of our St. Vincent's de Paul Society. They're feeding the poor in our parish, giving them food, rent, and uh, they really are the lifesaver of the poor in our community. And they do represent us. They make us look good in the community because of what they do. They have a fundraiser on January 20th from 5 to 7 o'clock in the evening. It's called Super Duper. Uh, it's all soup. That's why it's all Super Duper. It's unlimited, different varieties of soup and you, you can't imagine how, how delicious they are. So, uh, and it's unlimited, so you can have all the soup that you like, and you can try all of them too, if you want to. So, 
Uh, it's only $7 for adults, and it's also free for donation if you want to give more than $7. And, and any children that you bring with you, age 10 and under, they're free. So it's a good deal. It's a good deal too because it's afternoon, it's cold, nice to have a cup or a couple of cups or maybe five cups. <laughs> you have a lot of soup. So, so make sure you, you are enjoying yourself and you're supporting a very good cause. Tickets are outside. Uh, there's a member of the St. Vincent's there. Uh, there's a table there. You can get one of those tickets and buy tickets from them and find a seat. So uh, that's all our announcement. And by the way, uh, Father Frank is not here with us because he is in a, uh, a funeral of a family member who passed away. So he and his brother Joe went up to Claremont to be there for the funeral. But he will be here for the 7 o'clock Mass. Please stand for the final Mass. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks. Stay first because I'm forgetful. It's uh, today's the corporate mass of the CCW. May I ask the CCW members to please pray with me before we sing the final hymn. Prayer to Our Lady of Good Counsel. God of heavenly wisdom, you have given us Mary, Mother of Jesus, to be our guide and counselor. Grant that we may always seek her motherly help in this life and so enjoy her blessed presence in the life to come. O Mother of Good Counsel, Patroness of the National Council of Catholic Women, intercede for us that we may be wise, courageous, and loving leaders of the Church. Help us, dear Mother, to know the mind of Jesus, your Son. May the Holy Spirit fill us with reverence for God's creation and compassion for all God's children. May our labors of love of earth enhance the reign of God, and may God's gift of faith and living hope prepare us for the fullness of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us now enjoy singing our recessional hymn.